we just give God some praise. For he's worthy to be praised. And this morning, I want God to do just that. Take his place. Take his place. Move me out of the way and take your place. Let your spirit fill this place, Lord, with your spirit. Let your word go out and the city will not come back forward. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because everything that we have in our possession belongs to you. And we thank you for the the rain, as for the sunshine, because everything is yours. And we thank you for it. That was free. That was my message. I just gave that to you. Amen. 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 This morning, we're going to have some fun. I want you all to say with me this. And I want you to put the emphasis on it. I want you to say, who me? Who me? We do better than that. Who me? Who me? Yes, you. <laughs> then say, yes, you. Yes, you. Turn around and say this to somebody. Who me? Who me? Yes, you. Yes, you. That's what I said when God called me. <laughs> me? I try to get on. My father was living, and I tried to get on the bus to go to Detroit, Michigan, to get out of the way. And my dad laughed. He said, son, God is everywhere. You can go to Georgia if you want. God can get your attention. I said, God, me? I said, Lord, I'm messed up from the floor. Lord, I ain't fit to do anything. God said, yes, you. And the key about that was, it wasn't so much yes, it was how God said it. Otherwise, he said, yes, you, but he was saying, who I call, I prepare. Amen. See, there's some folks God called, and then there's some folks went. <laughs> but when God calls you, he equips you. He prepares you. When we was in the army, he would not put a, a, a gun in my hand. No, I can't shoot. So he wouldn't put me on the battlefield to kill somebody because I can't shoot. So he'll prepare you. But the key is you have to be available. Amen. That's it. That's it. Pray with me. I have because I give. And I give because... I have, and therefore I'm never without. Therefore, God supplies my every need. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you'll have your way this morning. As you begin to deal with me all week long, Lord, you told me to forget about who I am and to think about who you are. And I thank you for that this morning. Because I'm not up here for show or for fashion or to entertain anybody. I'm here to do my assignment and sit down. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to speak up. And then I'm going to shut up. (laughs) If you would be so kind to turn to me, Exodus, the fourth chapter. Exodus. Exodus, the fourth chapter. And we're going, I, I'm going to read all the way to the 12th verse, but I want you to just listen very careful as I begin to read this. Exodus 4, chapter, to the 12th verse. We won't be for you long, but we're going to do what God say do. Amen. Amen. I believe somebody was just telling me the other night that they went to the bar and they rocked the bar. They had a good time in the bar. And I believe that when folks come to church, they ought to rock the church and have a good time in the church. I believe if you can make noise in the nightclub, you ought to make some noise in the church. Every now and then somebody ought to say amen. Every now and then somebody ought to wave their hand. Every now and then, somebody else say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. 
And as Moses answered and said, but, wait a minute, let me, yeah, yeah. But believe me, or hearken unto my voice, for they will say the Lord hath prepared. Am I reading that right now? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, that's right. Let me read it again. And Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, or hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thy hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a servant. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth a hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. And they that may believe that the Lord has, that the Lord God of the father of Abraham and the father of Isaac and the God of Jacob have appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into that bush. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leopard as white. And he said, put thy hand into the bush again. And he put his hand into his bush again and plucked it out of his bush. And it turned again as his own flesh. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it come to pass that if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto the voice that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou have taken out of the river shall become blood upon the land. And Moses said, Lord, oh my God, I'm not eloquent, neither there to forth since. Thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, who hath made man's mouth? Who maketh the dumb, the dumb? or the deaf, or seen, or the blind. Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Thank God for his word. Thank God for, when you realize, as I begin to think about the story of Moses, that when you obey God, God will suddenly be with you, whatever he asks you to do. The problem is that when you don't ask God to be with you and you begin to do things on your own, that's when we mess up. That's when we mess up. So when God began to talk to Moses, Moses began to, Make all kinds of excuses. Oh, Lord, not me. Not me. I'm so a speech. Now, the Bible said that God called Moses three times. How many times God called you and you still ain't moved yet? How many times God asked you to do something and you still, who me, Lord? Lord, I'll do it, but I'll do it. On my own time. No, God said, no, you'll do it, but you'll do it on my time. There's sometimes when God calls us for ministry, we would rather not answer the call. Our first response is, who, me? That's not me. I can't do that. I think you got the wrong person. No, not me. I'm not qualified. Like Moses in Exodus 3, God has given Moses assignment to speak to the elders. 
and to deliver his people from Pharaoh. The first question he asked was, who, me? He has already made up his mind that he was a nobody. Let me pause right there. Have you ever heard people, when I worked in the city schools, I, I would hear mothers tell their kids, you ain't nobody. You'll never be nothing. And then when they stay in trouble, you want to beat them half to death when you told them they're nobody. But God, the God I serve, specializes in nobody. The God I serve can take a nobody and make somebody out of it. Because the God I serve, church, will not turn his back on you. The God I serve will not turn his back on me. God gave me assignment to preach the word. I'm going to get me wrong. When I was at my dad, when I preached in Cleveland, Detroit, different places, God did not give me assignment to make you tickle or make you feel good. God gave me assignment to preach the word whether you like it or you don't. I don't ain't too many likes. Amen, amen. Because sometimes we get caught in, well, they got to like what I'm saying. But see, the word of God will make you mad. And the word of God will make you glad. And the word of God will make you go apologize. Come on, y'all be honest this morning. The word of God will make you go back to the one who you've been rolling your eyes for a month and say, I'm sorry. Come on, speak, Holy Ghost, speak. The word of God will make you go back to the one who you can't sick, that's true. The one you went in the back. I know I'm preaching already. But when you rightly divine the word of God, the word of God will find you out. Because God knows all about you. Before he called me, he knew I said, oh no. I mean, you couldn't even mention me about going to preach. I said, you crazy? Me? I'm on my way to hell. Me? I'm enjoying doing partying on the all night long and having a good time. Me? Drinking my vodka and my Jack Daniel. Y'all know about some of that. My scotch and my water. Come on, y'all. Acting like a fool. Getting to the bar and can't remember how to go back home. Come on, y'all. Don't say amen when you've been there too. But God turned that away. It took God to turn me around. And if God can turn me around, don't you know God can keep me? Oh, let me pause. I got to pause for this. People will not forget about your past. But God will. I had an old lady come up to me this recently. I remember when you used to do what you used to do. I remember that. I remember you was tore up and you still tore up and lost. I remember that. People will not forget your past. You better listen when God speaks to you directly and say, you sure that's God? See, sometimes we don't move because brother a little bit didn't tell us to move. Sometimes we don't move because sister got here didn't tell us to move. But when God speaks, you better listen. They said when Eve, E.F. Hutton speaks, you listen. But I say this morning, when God speaks, you better listen. Oh, I'm happy now. Hallelujah. Listen, the reason why God was dealing with Moses because it is. Moses said he wasn't qualified. Because Moses was a Hebrew by birth. He had an Egyptian upbringing. Moses had a reputation for being a murderer and rebellious. He was a shepherd, Egyptian, despised shepherd. Moses doubted his qualifications for the assignment. 
Moses asked God, Lord, what if they don't believe me? Lord, what if they don't listen to me? And he told Moses, Moses, I certainly will be with you. In other words, Moses, I'm not going to send you out on the journey by yourself. See, all you got to do is do what God say you do and stop adding your two sins. God said, listen, to all my study, it's not, let me, let me say this, I, I got to say this. I got preacher friends. There's, they have degrees and doctor degrees and divided degrees and theological degrees and, and that's all fine. But how good is it the disease of the degree when you don't do nothing with it? How good is it when you don't help somebody and you got all this knowledge and you don't help nobody? How good is it for me to buy a Connor Lincoln brand new off the lot? Put it in my garage and never drive it. Good for nothing. So God said to me, WTT Senior, anything I teach you, use it to win souls. Don't get caught up in yourself, but get caught up in me where all your help comes from me. Hallelujah. Who, me? God said, yes, you. God said, see, what you don't understand, like I told Moses, I was with him. And like I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be with you. And can I break it down real quick? Come on, let me break it down. Other words, God said to me, there will be times, Wayne, that suddenly your folks is not going to like you. Not because of what you've done. It's because what I put you in the position to do. Let me break it down. Y'all look at me. Y'all come on and other words, there's some jealous folks in the land. Have you ever been around somebody jealous and hold their head up when they see you? And know you right next to him. <laughs> but God says, suddenly, if I tell you to go out in the vineyard, I'll be with you. God said to me, when you mess up, like he told Moses, when you mess up is when you go out there and I didn't tell you to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What says your not only was Moses lacking confidence in his fleshly self, man, but he seemed like he was lacking confidence in God. See, God, oh, I'm almost, who I'm feeling God's spirit. Oh, hallelujah. See, that's why it's important that saved folks ought to stay with saved folks. See, if I got a dead battery and I need to charge my car, why would I go and get another dead battery? <laughs> if you're trained to live right, and every time you try to live right, it seems like Satan is always present. Every time you want to do right, here comes somebody. You don't take all that. You don't need to do all that. <laughs> but let me tell you something. It takes that and more. God, you take your place. Because it takes that and more. Lord, you open up my mind and pour your word out there because it tastes that and more. Lord, you fill me with the Holy Spirit because as the Father went back to the Son, I need to go back to you, God, because it tastes that and more. And I 
I'm just, I, I just believe that God have not saved anybody to sit on their seat and do nothing and don't do nothing. Let me say it again. When the last time you call somebody, invite them to the church. See, there's two things we do. Let me make it clear. We either invite folks to the church or we run them away from the church. I know. But that's the truth. In times like these, people need to know the answer is not in me. The answer is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The answer is not about who I am. The answer is about who he is. And if God can use Moses, God can use you. God can take a wine off, take the bottle out of his hand and put the Bible in his heart. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. God took the rod and turned into a serpent and then used it for the Red Sea. Moses' years as a shepherd tending the sheep was not in vain. He told him to put his hand in his bosom, which turned to leprosy and was restored back to normal. But God uses what we have in our hand. God killed Goliath, used that situation. God used a little boy with two fishes and five loaves of bread and fed the 5,000. God used Noah, and he was a drunk and still used him to build an ark. God used Abraham. He was very old and had a kid. God used Isaac. He was a daydreamer. God used Jacob. He was a liar. God used Leah. She was ugly, but God used her. God used Joseph. He was abused. God used Samson. Womanizer. We had a prostitute. God used who he wants to use. Stop allowing people to stop you from God using you. Watch your company. See that sign on your door that says, welcome to my house? I took them off my porch. Everybody ain't welcome to my house. You can't allow everybody to come to your house. So in this house, me and my wife, we serve the Lord. In this house, me and my wife, We'll lift the Savior up. In this house, we'll have Bible study. In this house, we'll sing praises to God. In this house, we'll get on our knees and pray. In this house, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In this house, we'll lift him up. In this house, when Satan say no, we'll give God the praise. In this house, we'll praise him. That this way God abides in this house. I'm going to share this with you real quick. If you can't have church in your home, you can't have it here. See, I have church in my home. I have it in the shower. I've been singing all the time. My wife said, what song are you singing now? Because, see, I haven't always been saved. And when I stop and realize, how good God looked down on somebody like me. When I stop and realize, I was on my way to hell. And somebody picked me up and embraced me. And if God can save me, then God 
God can save somebody else. God did not turn his back on me. You do know folks will turn their back on you. You do know that. And if you don't know, you'll know it after the day. Let me share this with y'all. We did a funeral, but uh, and I don't mind my wife telling I'm just straight forward, folks. I had a preacher come in there, been knowing him, walk right past him. Just walk right past him. So after the middle of the service, he said, Oh, Elvin Chess, how you doing? I looked at him, I said, Now you want to speak. You seen me when you came in the door. You seen me where I waved my hand. Now you want to speak. That's phony. I like to call it like it is. That's phony. If you seen me and you look me in my eyes, and you don't speak. Don't speak now. <laughs> God prepares you for ministry. See, ministry is not something you should take lightly. Being up here, y'all don't know the stuff we go through. I search the scriptures and pray. And papers, I'm throwing this paper away. I'm getting this paper back out. I'm doing this. I'm getting it back out. I'm throwing it away. Not because I'm trying to improve to you what I know. I just want me to rightly divide the word of God. Don't get it twisted. I'm not up here to try to show you what I know. Because I don't know anything. But in all that way to know it's him. And he shall direct my path. See, God takes me, Zena, into his spiritual library. And he teaches me the word of God. Uh, Brother Arnold, I found out in my study that God has a playbook. You know how the NFL quarterbacks have a playbook? God shows me his playbook. He says, see, when they say you're not going to be nothing, look at my playbook, you're going to be something. When they say you, you'll never have a name, I'm going to give you a name. Hallelujah. When they say, you know, I'm so glad. I love my church. I love friendship. I love friendship. But I'm so glad y'all cannot put me, y'all have a place that way. What about you going to heaven? Putting me in heaven. I'll never make it. Because we like to judge folks. Y'all got so quiet. We, Brother Hunter, we had an altar call. And I was at a program. They asked me to do the altar call. And as I did the altar call, people began to look around and just look. And I said, wait, stop, stop. That's why people don't come to the altar because everybody's looking. Matter of fact, the same one looking should be the same one coming to the altar. Then they want to bow their heads. But being up here is not easy. It's a responsibility. It is, it's a responsibility that I want to tell nobody unless God really called you to do it. I don't have no head now, but I was up here every day. Because I'd be so nervous. God, I want to be able to make sure I'm right and divine and saying the right things. And that's why it's important for me to say what I say and shut up. God didn't tell me to stay up here and go down to Mississippi and come back up here to Georgia. He told me to do what I need to do and let him do the rest. God said, I'll tell you what, you catch him, I'll clean him. That's what he said. Who, me? Yes, you. Yes, you. God knows about Moses and he knows about his speech problem. 
but God, but God was willing to use Moses anyhow. And even though Moses had a speech problem, now brother, on the, when I when I read this, I, I, it, sh- it just made me just begin to cry. See, Moses had a problem from birth, but God told Moses, Moses. I made you like that. I know all about you, Moses. But then, if you read Acts 7 and 22, it says that Moses was well learned in all wisdom and Egyptian and was mighty in words and in deed. God can remove that studying from you. Or whatever problem you have, God can move that. And use you if you move out the way. So many times we make so many excuses. I wouldn't do it this way. Why you do it that way? Why you do it that way? Why won't you do it? You come out here and do it. God wants to use you. Matter of fact, God wants to use. Every time I think about our children. Our young people sing. They don't have a lot, but God uses them every time they come up here. And let me say this. This is just for, and I mean this from my heart. I know that we have the best young people in the world at Finisher Baptist. Oh, you didn't hear me because nobody didn't say amen. We have the best young people right here. And they open their mouth. And God uses them every time. Because they say, Lord, we are fellow. We don't have much, but we're willing to use, Lord, what we have. See, God don't need a lot of people. He didn't need some faithful few folks. I don't have to preach at a big cathedral with a lot of folks. Only so many people going to take in and take heed to your word. I didn't need somebody who said I need a word from the Lord. I need somebody who said, Lord, use me on today. If God can use Moses, God can use you. If God can deal with Moses' problem, God can deal with yours. If God can tell Moses, Moses, I made you out. I'll be with you. I will not send you out there by yourself. I will not send you out there when you're out there by yourself. I will be with you, Moses. I will tell you what to say. I will speak through you, Moses. God will do the same thing for us. Can I just keep it real, real quick? You talking about being scared? When I started preaching, I got up there and I started looking at folks' faces. I didn't know I wanted to run, hide, or what. Because people look so serious at you. You singing Amazing Grace and they looking. (laughs) You singing it from the depths of your heart and people looking at you. And God said, don't let their faces scare you. Don't let their faces scare you. Because I'm the one who has given you the assignment. So, what, and, and this is true. So what God does for me, he takes the blind and puts it on my eye. And really, I see you, but thank God I don't see you. I mean, you look beautiful, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. But I'm glad I don't see you. Because I'm doing what God say do. And it's so important in times like these that we must do what God say do. And I said to my wife all the time, when God blesses me and he ever blessed me with the church, I'm going to do what I have to do. And if I got to shut and jive and play, I'm going to take that seat and sit down somewhere. Because it's not about a title. Being up here is not about a title. It's not about being everybody see you. It's about giving people the word of God. 
that somebody will say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, I'm tired of being tired. Lord, I'm tired of the pain and the heartaches. Lord, I'm tired of not wrestling every night and can't sleep. Lord, I'm tired because I've been doing it my own way for so long. And that's the problem. You've been doing it your own way. You need to try Jesus. You need to give it to him. Because that same God with Moses, that same God that comforted Moses, is that same God that will comfort you. God said, I am the same today, tomorrow. Forevermore. See, we might change. And don't let me get an attitude because I will change. But God will not change. God will meet you at your need. And whatever you need, God got it. And the reason maybe why you don't have what you need because you've been asking the wrong one. It's time to ask God. And I always tell people, if you're on an elevator and you go into the fifth floor and the elevator don't move, there's something wrong. You stay right there. It's maybe because you need to ask God to take you higher. And he will take you higher. Not higher that you want to be big, but higher in his word. And the more you grow, the more you know. And the more you know, the more you can tell somebody. And you you feel comfortable because you know that it's the word of God. See, I know that I'm giving you the word of God. I know that. Now, how you like it, that's up to you. But I'm going to give it to you. Amen. I'm going to give it to you. Who, me, Lord? You going to use me? Me, Lord. And God said, I'm going to use you. But I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to create in you a clean heart. And restore you a right spirit. God said, I'm going to put my spirit within you. And God said, then I'm going to help you learn the word of God. So that when you deal with situations when you talk to God early in the morning and that's all you need to talk to God you can deal with any other situation because you talk to God I'm not saying that you won't go through something but God will help you go through what you're going through and sometimes in a busy schedule my phone ring all the time sometimes I don't mean to answer it because I'm talking to God I want God to fill me with his spirit I want God to give me what to say. So when God say, I'm going to use you, then I say, Lord, you use me because I'm available to you. As I take my seat in a few minutes, but I want you to say, remember this. God is good. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. God is good and we give God the praise. And, and always remember, God has your best. He, he has he have the plan for you. You don't know his plan, Jeremiah eleven twenty nine. 29. He has plans for you. Remember, God can, he can build your character and your potential. But remember that you're only the messenger, not the message. God will give you what to say, but it's not you. Sometimes I watch, and I sit on my porch, and my mailman come down, and I watch how folks will come out the house, and they so anxious to get their mail. And they just, they just can't hardly check. They just stop the mailman in the middle of the street. Can't wait to get the mail. And then finally, I'm with the mailman waving hands, saying, ain't got nothing for you. But what I'm saying is, God will give you what to give people. And God will tell you, don't give them you. You give them what I tell you to give them. And once you've done that, once you've done what God say do, then you can sit down you can feel comfortable. See, I can go home this evening and I can feel good because I've done what God say do. 
See, because it's not up to me how they take it. It's just it's up how I present it to how God presented it to me. First, it helped me. Because, see, I had a speech problem, too. And let me share this with you real quick. As I was coming up real quick on the east side of Rome, I had a speech problem. Don't you know that, Sister Betty, that folks will make fun of you and they will laugh at you? And I will study. And, and, and I will just cry because I will study so bad. And, and kids will make fun. Now, now, don't fool yourself, y'all. It wasn't always kids that made fun of you. It's some grown adults made fun of you, too. So what I would do, Mo, is I would cry to the Lord. Now, at the time, I didn't know him as well. I said, but God, if you help me, because I want, I want to be able to speak. Lord, if you help me, because I went to the right source. I said, God, if you help me, Lord, I'll study your word. And eventually, God began to take that step and move it away. <laughs> Glory to Whoa, glory! That's what God did. Just like the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. She went to every doctor. She tried everything else. She said, oh, I know. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. It's not about who you know. It's about who you know. Otherwise, you got to know Jesus. He will make the difference in your life. He can make a change in your life. God took that away from me. And that's why I praise God the way I praise God. That's why I give God the glory the way I give God the glory. And I think God, I got to give props real quick before I take my seat to my wife because I got a praying wife who prays for her husband. That's You can clap your hands. You can clap your hands. She don't say much. And she don't even be around me, but I know I got a praying wife. And I know she's praying for me. I know she's praying. That's why um, they say don't go home, don't leave home without your wallet. I always say don't leave home without your wife. Our gracious Father, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you because, Lord, if you can use anybody, you can use me. You can use any individual. And Lord, we just thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen.